Hello, squirrel friends. Welcome back to another Tuesday book review and makeup with Mondo. Um, if you are interested in any of the pieces that you're hearing, I will link the YouTube video to them in the description box. Um, if you have any interest in buying them from me uh, or just want an MP3, you can get a hold of me. I'll link my email address for that also in the description box. Um, I will list all the products and their links in the description box as well for all the stuff that I'm using. Um, today we're going to be reviewing Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. Um, it is a young adult title, so it comes with different things. So don't don't think that there's anything different about that. It just means that it doesn't have as like strong of language in it. But the reading level is almost as high as adult books. I love young adult books. The book is set in modern times. You are following from the first person of B, who is the main character pretty much. Um, she has just finished her first year of college outside of high school. She had a kind of rocky, well not kind of, she had a rocky last week or so of high school. She was dating a boy named Jim. He was pretty much like everybody's favorite. He was a thespian and he wrote music and you kind of learn more about that as it as the book goes along. B also wrote music. I think that's really cute that she wrote, uh, she wrote incidental music to different movies that didn't exist. So she would make up movies in her head and then write music for them. Isn't that cute? I love that. Isn't that so cool? B has spent the summer working for her family's ice cream shop in this little town in New England. She went to a private school on scholarship. She wasn't particularly rich like most of the kids there and most of her friends. She had a group of about six of them with Jim. Martha was another girl that was on scholarship like B. Um, and then there's Kipling, one of the boys, Cannon, another boy, and Whitley. Whitley was like the main girl, pretty much. One of the Queen Bee kind of type people from the school. Um, so when we come into this story, B has just gotten an invitation to come revisit everybody at um, Whitley's stepfather's estate. Now I'm gonna tell you, girl, this is an estate. I'm not like joking about that at all. She was not joking at all that this is an estate. And it's huge, it has huge grounds, it's a huge mansion of a house. It's a huge place with like a gated entrance, a long driveway to get to it. It's huge, which is very cool to go visit, but could you imagine living there? Um, which comes with his own problems and stuff, I know. But um, B, kind of at the last minute and at the apprehension of her parents and a little bit herself, decides she's gonna go. She's gonna go for this weekend and I think she really just planned on going to see them for the evening and maybe not even that. She's kind of hoping to hear what they think happened to Jim. Jim's death was ruled a suicide, but she really does not believe that and nor does a lot of people. It seemed like it was pretty much hush-hushed up and made to be a suicide when it was not. But she's hoping to go there and maybe get shed some light on what happened from what they think. Because B pretty much just took off right after Jim died. I don't think she even walked for her graduation or anything, just took off. Just was like, I'm out, this is not, I'm not having this crap. And just left, rightfully so that I mean, that's understandable for somebody to feel that kind of way. She doesn't really tell her friends that she's coming. She just kind of shows up. And when she gets to the estate, uh, they're like, Oh, hey girl, we were hoping you'd come, but we didn't really think you were going to because you didn't say anything. And then they're going to, a, they're all getting ready and going to a concert that she does not have tickets to. So they get her in and they have a really good time. They have fake IDs and stuff like that to help them get through security and drink and things like that. So they're having a good time. They're drinking quite a bit. And then as they're heading home, Whitley's not like the best driver in the world. And she's a little scary from what they say. They get into a like almost accident with a truck on the way home and they narrowly escape it. Then when they get back to the estate, they continue to drink and have fun and catch up with each other and pretend like it's old times until they get a knock on the door. 
And I mean, this isn't like, as I said, like this isn't like a, just a normal house. This is an estate. Getting a knock on a door, especially late at night, is weird enough. But getting a knock on the door at an estate like this is very uncommon because somebody had to get through the gates, walk or drive, and they didn't hear a car come up all the way to the front door, which is very odd. Because you're like, how did you do that? Why did you do that? And they look out the peephole and they see that it's an older gentleman and they're like, hmm, this is strange. Why is some dude just outside the front door? And they contemplate not letting him in, but he continues to knock. So they decide, let's just let him in and see what's going on. Maybe he's in trouble or something and we have to help him. So they let him in and he comes in and he's like, you're gonna give me some treat? Like they're being rude <laughs> for him interrupting them in the middle of the night. But um, anyway, so they're like, uh, sure. So they all go into the kitchen and they're like making him some tea and doing stuff like that. When all of a sudden he just drops the bomb and he's like, uh, y'all dead. <laughs> you know that little interaction you had with that truck? Well, it wasn't a little interaction and you're all on the side of the road right now. You're not even here. This is now the never world and you are in a droplet of time between life and death, kind of like limbo. And you're going to relive this day over and over until you guys have come to a consensus about who should go back to being alive and the rest of you will go back to being will go on to being dead sorry it's really hard to talk and do makeup at the same time i swear so they're like how do we do that and they have to vote they vote on who will go back one of them can only one can and so they vote and he says not unanimous they only get one vote every week which is pretty much a day but what is a day when you're dead, you know? Then they move on and have another wake. Well, they wake up every day in the in the Jaguar again, in the rain outside the estate. They have to do it all over again. Everything happens again, but they have their memories still. So they, they know that they have this wake every day. And then the world around them is still just continued on in this little droplet, like um, Groundhog's Day kind of thing, except for a better plot they start to realize that something that they need to like figure this out and they keep having wakes after wake after wake and they do things they kind of like keep themselves occupied by doing other stuff like whitley and i think it's kipling they go off and kind of wreak havoc and you find this out because b follows them she starts her thing isn't like going off on her own it's following the other ones. So she goes off and occupies her time by following the others and finding out what they're doing with their lives. Well, with their undead lives. So she starts speculating on what Martha's doing. Why is Martha going back to school? Why is she traveling into the city to go to the school, this university? They don't really mention canon too much. They can't really go very far and he's from the south they can only go as far as that day will allow them traveling wise or they get ripped right back making it anywhere is kind of hard at first so she follows all of them and then starts thinking oh this is so boring there's just nothing nothing exciting about following them so she just goes back to the estate and they all try to go back to their lives like pretending it's not real and so that lasts for a while that they kind of like deny. So they do go through kind of like the stages of grief. After a little bit, they start realizing they have to, this can't go on forever. It's not worth it to just continue on going this little stupid route of either being crazy and doing weird stuff or whatever. They need to figure out what they're gonna do and decide to vote and get somebody to go back. That's where it gets a lot of supernatural qualities to it, which is cool. Oh my God, it's so fun. Like the imagination on this woman, I swear, so high. Like she just, I couldn't, she thinks of so much stuff. Marisha Pestel just really, she has a really cool imagination. That's what I'm gonna say about this. I'm gonna put on my eyeliner, I'll be right back. Back. So, um, so they decide to come back together and meet back at the estate and figure out a lot of stuff. Like, 
Why are they stuck in this little time loop? What are they gonna do to get out of it? All that stuff. And they realize maybe it's because of their friend, Jim. His death always seemed so wrong. Like it didn't seem right. They don't know what's going on. They, there must be something that connects them to his death, they think. And so then they hop on this little train of figuring out why, trying to Scooby-Doo it and learn why they're actually stuck there. Because this can't happen to everybody. Or there'd be somebody blabbing about it, right? You know there would be. There'd be some book written about like, I was stuck in a time loop. They fall into that. And that's where even more of the supernatural stuff happens. And they end up losing people along the way and refinding them. Um, they try to stay together as a group. It's really cool. Um, it's really interesting. I just love it. Such an interesting book. I, partway through, at the very beginning, I was like, is this just going to be like Groundhog's Day or that movie um, Happy Death Day? I was like, oh, is it just going to be that? No. No. No, ma'am. So much more than those books. And those movies, sorry. Too many books on my brain. So much more than those movies ever could get into a movie. A book is the only place that you can get like this amount of imagination and creativity without trying to like figure out how to budget all that. So that's why I love books more than movies. So the book is really cool. It's, um, oh crap. You see that? When that happens, ugh. But let it dry. Let it completely dry and then you can wipe it away. Don't move it when it's wet. It just happens like it, it does. Or you get on your nose. Oh my God, I've never, I haven't done that yet. But I say yet because it's gonna happen and I know it. So if you ever get mascara somewhere, just leave it until it dries and then you can wipe it away with a brush. So the book states a claim on it from a reviewer that says this is a clear your calendar type of book. Yes, it is. It totally is. That made me want to buy it, this right there. And I thought, well, probably not, but still that's really cool that somebody thought that. And then, but it is, it really is. It is a book that you want to read and you don't want to stop. I did, I wanted to call into work for it. I wanted to call into work and be like, I can't come in. I'm like <laughs> sick. Just so I could read this book and figure out what happened. I was so engrossed in this book. It was so cool. I just loved it, loved it. Oh my God. Um, it's for fans of like anybody that likes supernatural stories. That's awesome. Like, especially great for that. Supernatural stories. Um, anybody that likes, I'm gonna give a little bit of a spoiler, but, um, time travel? I feel like any kind of time travel book, this will be one for you too. Cause they're hard to find. Like those are really hard to find good time travel books. Also, somebody that wants to read anything about the afterlife, because that's really cool too. I love hearing about the afterlife or what other people think happened, happens to us. So give this book a try. It's one of Barnes and Noble's um, pick of the month, our pick of the month, whatever they want to call it. So it's readily available. It's easily available. Like it's everywhere in paperback right now. Awesome cover. It had a different cover for the hardback. Um, but this one has quite a different cover and it's more colorful for the paperback, which is awesome, awesome. This book is appropriate for like ages from probably um, 11 up. Anybody can read this, as long as you can read that level, which isn't very high, but it's great. Um, it definitely is like a weekend book. Like this is a book that you sit down and have a weekend just reading this book. It's awesome, love it. Um, other books similar to this would be like if I Before I Fall by um, Lauren Oliver, um, What Dreams May Come, which I already did one for. Um, there's a lot of books kind of similar to this, but this is such a standalone book. She did such an amazing job with it. I did. She had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I did not even know where this was going. Had no idea where she was going to take this. The ending is so, it's simply elegant. That's what I'm gonna say. It's very simple elegance. It, it's not some fantastical ending where you're like, geez, wow, that was, 
it's for that reason. It's the same thing, but for different reasons. Like you're like, oh, like it's not like huge explosion ending, but it's it's like rocks your world. Like the ending that she made was so cool. I just loved the ending. Um, would love to talk to you guys about this book. So if you guys read this book, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it. Oh, it'd be so fun. Have, a, have maybe have a video about your guys' questions or comments or like a discussion on live or something. That'd be fun. Um, as always, guys, please, please be safe out there. I know it's very scary times. I know it's very lonely times. So um, wear your masks above your nose. I like this. And don't pull your mask down. I read an article that said like, if you pull your mask down, you get germs right here from walking around. And then if you pull your mask down below that, it gets germs on the inside of your mask and then you put them right back up. Ugh. Take your mask off. Like your straps, take your mask off. Um, wear your mask all the time. Be very careful, very careful. Wash your hands, people, wash your hands. Be kind to others right now. We're all just trying our best. We're all lonely and having a hard time. So don't feel alone in that, that you're having a hard time. We all are. Make kind choices. I will see you guys next Tuesday for another book review. If you have any questions or want me to try a book, read a book, um, I'm going to be reading a book by my yoga teacher, Laura, uh, Laura um, The Devil of Nanking. Oh, after this book I'm reading right now, I'm so excited. Um, as always, guys, I hope you're having a good morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night. 